From afternoon tea in the UK to morning coffee in the US, welcome to Foodies Across the Pond with Jane Raven and Lisa Siegel. Hello, Jane. Hello, Lisa. How are you? Our, should we toast with our coffees and teas? Oh, I love that. Look at that gorgeous mug you've got today. You've got mug envy. I do have mug envy. It's lovely. It's so lovely. I can't believe you don't have Emma Bridgewater mugs over there. Maybe These you do. Are... I just have to go look for them. They're really, it's beautiful. She's oh, they are really lovely. Really lovely. It's one of the few, um, she makes them up in Staffordshire where, where, look, we've gone off on a tangent already, where Wedgwood like and all the potteries, you know. Oh, right, right. All of, all of the famous potteries were. And uh, she is, she's created her own up there and and she's going great guns emma bridgewater www.emmabridgewater you know the drill we'll put the link below so you guys can find it yeah. <laughs> but speaking of exciting things so you know what's happening in just two days time over here in the states fourth of july oh my goodness where did you go i don't know i have no <laughs> idea but now it's july i can't cope I, my it's brain's july. still in february it's July, which means wow. it's barbecue season and fireworks and grilling and outdoors and the weather is so nice and hot, which of course we always have to like fit the weather forecast in our chats because that's just kind of how we roll. But yes, 4th of July is in like two days, which Wonderful. I'm so excited about. Oh my gosh, the lake is going to be packed, tons of boats out there, fireworks, there's fireworks that go off. We can actually sit on our deck and watch the fireworks shows from all over. And there's a beautiful one that goes off the top of the Space Needle, which is really fun to watch too, so. Oh, how fantastic, I'm quite jealous. Yeah, no, it's very, it's very festive, very festive. So- You like your, your events, don't you? We do like our events, yeah. In fact, yeah. actually one of the most fabulous 4th of July events we went to was several years ago. Gosh, the kids were little. We were back in DC, we did a, a, an East Coast trip and we happened to be in DC. I mean, we knew when we, we booked the trip, but we were in DC during 4th of July. And so we left the hotel early. They packed us a little picnic and we waited at the Washington Monument, which was really neat. Um, oh, and cool. just I watched all the crowds arrive and it was really beautiful. It was a beautiful fireworks show. And actually earlier in the day, we went to, there's an amazing parade. It was really neat. It was very, yeah, it was very cool. And because it's 4th of July in just two days, and if anyone I'm sure watching is gonna be barbecuing and grilling and cooking and having a party, we thought it'd be really fun to interview Whiskey and Woof founder, Coco. She is fantastic. She combined her two loves of whiskey and dogs into the most beautiful, incredible, gorgeous candles with the most amazing scents handcrafted by her source she picks all the fragrances and has the most beautiful combination of fragrances and they're just amazing and because you know candles go with parties also whiskey goes with parties so stay tuned to the Sorry. end because we get to go in the kitchen and cook up some fun whiskey themed recipes so but first we have to <laughs> absolutely but first here is my chat with the amazing, wonderful Coco of Whiskey and Wolf. Well, hey, Coco. I'm so glad you're here today. Hi, Lisa. Hello. It's amazing to see you. So excited to see you with Whiskey and Wolf. Oh my gosh, I can't wait to talk to you all about candles because as I chatted a little bit with Jane, I love candles. I love burning candles. I love setting the mood in the kitchen when I'm cooking dinner, whether it's like summer, or fall, winter, spring. Love it. And your candles are incredible. They are absolutely, you can tell the love and the care that goes into each one. They are absolutely beautiful. Thank Amazing. you. Why don't you, I know you like Fira, so why don't I just hand you one? Here. Oh my God, seriously? <laughs> well, that was smooth. Thank you so much. Oh my God. Oh, <laughs> I love it. The internet. I love the internet. I just wish the internet had smell-o-vision so everyone could actually smell how amazing this candle smells. Yes. Like, <laughs> okay, so how did you get started? Tell us, tell us all about how did you get started in this beautiful business? 
Well, my dog is a micro influencer and people were always asking me, when are you going to come out with a fashion line for her? And I, I knew far too many artisans that do that, that were really good. And we were living in London at the time. And so I also became a member of the British Bourbon Society. And so it occurred to me, how can I kind of like marry these two passions of mine together? And so it was me doing candles, but like as a, a hobby, right? It was just, you know, hey, here's something to go and do with friends, blah, blah. Um, and then I moved back to the US and there were so many more fragrances that were available, so much more easy to get supplies and things. And I was looking for like more of a, creative outlet so I, again I started thinking hmm yeah like maybe I can make some whiskey candles maybe I can you know bring that whiskey passion to candles and then I started thinking about telling my dog's story through scent so it's a cinematic yeah so it's like a cinematic interpretation so for instance for her her scent is an ocean rose musk. And so it's based on like walking on the beach, you've got the waves lapping on one side, the little paws that you're following ahead of you. And, you know, just as you're passing some driftwood, you come around a corner and there's, you know, a rose bush. So it's, it's like the senses are coming together, but it's an experience. So everything was sort of like the personification of that cinematic dog moment there's no there's no wet dog that. smells <laughs> okay. that's probably a good thing maybe i would think you know i mean market for that don't don't get me wrong some people really like that and that's good for you but that's yeah. not right. <laughs> well scents are really personal i mean i guess yeah. you, say, you know sense really like what what one person likes maybe someone likes a really musky scent someone else likes a really floral scent other people like a really clean scent yeah I mean, it's, it, and it is funny and it takes time to find the right balance of things. And some things I was um, at a candle event for La Labo last week and talking to them and it takes them two to three years to develop one scent. That's and I don't think that's how it was in the beginning but then they got bought by Estee Lauder. So right. for me, it was another moment where I said, um, wow, I really feel empowered to be able to be the only chain of kind of approval right, right so they right. have to get it approved by you know corporation level and that's why it can take so long and uh, I think the longest I've taken for one cent um was eight months that's sometimes a they're long yeah, time now. yeah it is a long time but what happens sometimes if, if you're making it and you're collaborating with someone also or you're testing you every time you every element especially when you're like getting your process down mm -hmm. every element has to be tested so the diameter of the wick um because if you use dye or the fragrance the fragrance loads are different so some fragrances are really heavy and some are really light so you you know, it also depends, hey, this wax can hold 10% of this fragrance, but do I need it to? And my, and I know a lot of people just will blend two things together, like lavender and sage. I am not knocking that. That is great. That if that is what you're into, fantastic. Mm -hmm. But for me, there's always more elements. So I'm not just saying, okay, it can hold 9%. Let's say you go with 10%, right? So it's like the math is, 16 ounces in a pound. So you say 10% of that, 1.6 ounces of fragrance, take that from 16 ounces. And then um, out of that, you're kind of going, okay, I've got 1.6 ounces of fragrance. What percentage of that is this thing if I have five different scents? So that is where there can be a lot of math, a lot of chemistry involved dye, anything you do to change the candle, whether it's the vessel or it's the wick. Right. It, it so it does take time. And then you might be like, oh, I thought this was going to be amazing. This was going to be 60% whiskey. Oh, that's too much. Now right, I got to right. go. So that's why it can take so long to find there's a little bit of chemistry. And then other times it's just like, I smelled this thing. This, this is what I got. And I'm doing this. So how do you, how do you pick your fragrances then? Yeah. So, I mean, sometimes it comes to me because 
uh, people will ask me, they'll make, they'll ask me to make them a bespoke candle. But like a couple of weeks ago, maybe it was a couple of months ago, I met my friend Allison um, on Clubhouse and she is the founder of Brand Whiskey. Oh, look at, oh, that's a gorgeous bottle. Really beautiful. And if you were kind of like, um, new to whiskey or you're like, oh, sometimes I've had whiskey and it's too harsh. What I love about Bren is the, the biggest problem is that it's too drinkable. <laughs> this bottle goes very fast. I was gonna say, you could put a little bit in my coffee. With these <laughs> yes, right now. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. And I'll take a little for myself right here. I'll join you. Let's have a drink. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. I love it. <laughs> and, um, but you know, you smell different things in this. So for, for me, for instance, and, and also by the way, so these are, this is aged in French oak. So it's a little more like cognac cleaning. And so when you think about um, different scents, it's like, there can be all sorts of inspirations. For instance, I really love peonies. And for me, peony season is too short. So I created a peony candle so I could always have peonies around year round. And um, I think, hold on. And then I also have one that's like, Jap I love the cherry blossoms. So oh, yeah. I made one and I, and I also look at the calendar year now. I did not, in the beginning, I was like, no, I'm making these whiskey scents and I'm making these other dog inspired or dog mom inspired, sometimes dog dad inspired scents. And um, sometimes I have something in mind specific, like, oh, it's Christmas or it's St. Patrick's Day or um, it's summer. And sometimes I just am like, you know what? I, I had this whiskey a couple of weeks ago and I was like, I know what the flavors are, rolling it back on my tongue that I'm going to do. So I actually made one and sent it to Allison just because. That's really neat. Yeah, she oh, just got it today. So I was really happy because she's like, did you just, and I was like, I just made it because I knew she was having, it was her birthday recently and she was having like a little bit of a hard time. Her aunt passed away. Just, I just wanted to kind of send her a wax hug. <laughs> that, that was what I did. So I just was like inspired, but what, what I tasted and it actually smells really nice. It's um, like whiskey, clove and cinnamon. Oh, and, I don't know. No, yeah, and there is a note of banana in it, but um, I don't want that in a candle, so I didn't I leave the banana out. I left it out. So now once, so once you pick the flavor, the, the smell of the candle, um, what's the next step then? So you've got your, set, you've got your scent, and so then yeah. the next step would be to then create, do you do that at, like in your home? Do you have a... Yeah, I do that in my home. Um, everything is hand poured by me, hand mixed by me. Uh, sometimes when I sometimes when I test, I will give samples to other people so I can get feedback. But in general, um, unless it's a bespoke candle, now I don't do that. I just know, and it's funny because if it's not right, I also know. So that's also what can happen when you're like, I mean, I made this bespoke candle for someone. It was a memorial candle. And the next day I was doing yoga and I smelled it. Like it just, all, it was curing and it was really strong and it hit me and I was like, that's all wrong. That is all wrong. <laughs> and I just was like, I'm starting over. So I went out, I did some errands. I smelled some things outside. I went to a perfume counter and smelled some things. I went and smelled some candles and then I just kind of came home I just started grabbing fragrances. I knew what I was looking for and I just started grabbing stuff and I put it together. I made the candle again and that was it. And it's, I, I've never released that one to other people, but I'm going to. It's a special candle. Now, when you say bespoke, if people don't understand what a bespoke candle is, yeah. what is? That means made for you. Made okay. by hand, just for you. So it's custom. Um, sorry, I lived in London and everybody's always like, bespoke, bespoke, bespoke. <laughs> know what bespoke is? Because I think it's really cool that you have that, you have that part of your business too, is like making some of their custom too, just for a certain client. I think it's really Oh, special. yeah. I mean, if people ask me, what's your favorite scent? I just say custom. I love that. I love, I love that. So now where do you get your fragrance? Is there a place that you purchase to have all those fragrances? Yeah. And that can be a lot of trial and error. And that's why when I see videos on YouTube where they're like, Hey, start a candle business for $1,500. I'm like, what does start mean to you? 
I mean, me, like I could spend $1,500. If you gave me $1,500 right now, I would buy fragrances. And you can get testers sometimes. There are groups that will like, you can resell if you don't like something. Um, but in general, it takes time to also know, okay, this company has the same values as I do. And I really like their sense. They're doing stuff at a, a next level. Right. And, you know, I have companies where I get one fragrance from because that's the only fragrance from them that I like. So I do have four different vendors and I don't say no to trying new stuff. Um, and I, I did consult a perfumer for like, a you know, a couple of days. She and I had completely different olfactory senses of what we liked. And I was just like, no, you got to trust in yourself. Absolutely. And then the more you do it, you just kind of grow in confidence. Right. No, absolutely. And what she, I mean, I'm going to just show people again. I mean, this is absolutely the most gorgeous packaging and it comes in the most gorgeous. I love that you've got the wax seal with the black, yeah. like your branding is, is absolutely exquisite. Is Thank you. Absolutely gorgeous. It really is. So where can people find you besides your, we're going to put links for website down yep. below. But if people are local, cause you're on the East coast. So where can yep. people find you? If they're back on the East coast. So you can go on whiskeyandwolf.com. So whiskey with an E and wolf. Um, but there's also candles are on Vera shop. Yay. Yay. If you're in Cleveland, Kilgore Trout, please go in and say hi to Andrea for me. She's got, uh, I think she has nine cents. So she's got quite a few. And then I just spoke to a new retailer on Friday that's in Greenwich Village. So I'm making some stuff for them. Um, and then, yeah, that's something that I'm pushing myself to do more of and talk to more retailers now that things are opening up and that retail is coming back because it's exciting. It's not that I don't love D2C. I'm happy with that, but it's also really nice to be like, this is in a store and people I've never met will just go in and smell them and want them. And, and that's just such a great and humbling experience. I love that. Well, we'll put all, I'll put all the links for all those stores um, down below so people can go take a look. Is there anything else that you wanted to share about candles or candle making with everybody? Yeah, I think that candle making is something that's really um, an art. I love getting better at my craft, test, test, test. If you're gonna do this, I just cannot stress enough that you can test things and have fun with it. And you know, your taste might be completely different from mine. So I love supporting other people and I love that you do that too, Lisa. So thanks for having me on today. Absolutely. I know one thing that I think the audience would love to hear because I know it was new to me is how to properly burn a candle. So I know oh yes, okay. People, so I was doing it completely wrong. So the first time that you smell a candle and every one of my candles comes with a care card. So hopefully you get a candle that has a wick that's pretty centered. That also, I'm telling you, wax is one of the most reactive things ever. It's like you change one thing and it's like, no, I'm going to my room and slamming the door. What? Okay. So... <laughs> See, I personify the candles all the time, but essentially you want to make sure the first time that you burn it, you want to make sure that the wick is about a quarter of an inch. So usually it comes, you might just need a little bit of snip, but you want to make sure that you burn it from side to side so that there is a liquid pool all the way covering that top layer. So it's about an hour, it might be two hours, um, and then blow it out. And the reason that you want it to have that liquid pool is wax has a memory. Mm -hmm. I told you wax is temperamental, it has a memory. So yeah. if you only do a dime size pool and then you blow it out and you go, it's gonna tunnel down and it's never gonna go further out because you made that initial melting pool and that's as big as it's gonna get. And that will happen with anything. It will happen with the dip tea candle. It will happen with Byredo. It will happen with, with my candles. And um, so that's really important. And it also, when you're saying, oh, first burn, you just said after an hour or two, blow it out. Yes. And this will help you set up your candle for optimization, the best burn, the best amount of time. And then you really, after that, you can burn it for three or four hours. You don't wanna just leave it burning all day because 
A, your candle will be gone very quickly. But B, and it's so tempting to burn all day because they smell so good. <laughs> yeah, but but B, it's also like the, the glass can actually overheat. Oh. So it can explode. So you don't, and you could burn yourself. So there's so many reasons that you don't want to burn it more than three or four hours. It's also because the cycle of our um, memory for scent starts to fade after that amount of time. So it can let in new sense in case something else happens that you, so when people are like, oh, why did that? I feel like it wasn't as strong. I didn't notice it as much after like a couple of hours. That's because we go nose blind. Oh, interesting. Oh my God, that's, see, I didn't yeah. know that. I did not know that before yeah. I met you. So I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us on Foodies Across the Pond today, Coco. I really, this was so much fun chatting with you. Oh, I love chatting with you, Lisa. You're amazing. Thanks oh, for having me on. <laughs> oh, anytime. And hopefully we'll have you on in the future because, you know, when you want to preview new scents, give me a call. Oh, <laughs> okay. Good to know. <laughs> All right. Take care, Coco, and I will chat with you soon. Okay. Bye. Bye. Hello, and welcome to the commercial kitchen. We've skipped out of home and we're now in our commercial kitchen, hence all the gubbins behind me. And we are celebrating. It's the 4th of July. We're going for it. We're making a whiskey and woof cocktail. Uh, with Well, I'm, I'm guessing that if this is made over in America, you're going to be using bourbon. I am using whiskey and we are going for it. I'm not a big whiskey fan, but I promise I will try this at the end. Ingredients for your whiskey, Alexander whiskey this is an english whiskey made in norfolk over by the coast that's sold via liberties creme de cacao or the nearest thing this is the nearest thing that i could find which is nero and it's a chocolate liqueur cream half a pint 300 ml we've got quarter of a pint of the whiskey poured out and some ice cubes that i've forgotten to get out of the freezer as if by magic, in my Nutri Blender, I have about half a dozen ice cubes. And to that, I am going to add my quarter of a pint of whiskey. I'm not going to drink all of this. I hope George isn't either. Uh, half a pint of cream. Poor. It's looking good already. And then four tablespoons of your creme de cacao or your chocolate liqueur which i oh my god look at this and we're going you'll have to excuse my poxy spoon but it does the job but oh my god look at that i have lost count i'm so taken by it i think that was four four tablespoons of creme de cacao and now we're going to blend Alexander and just top it off with a bit of good quality cocoa. Look at that, that looks pretty lovely doesn't it? Can you see that? Cheers Lisa and all happy 4th of July. Oh my word, cheers, try that! Oh my gosh, I'm so excited for this. Mm. Oh my gosh, that's so good. All right, now that we've got the cocktail, let's get ready and make a bourbon barbecue sauce because it's 4th of July and I'm sure that you guys are all barbecuing. And if you're watching from overseas, from the UK, hopefully you're barbecuing anyway because it's a weekend, right? So let's get started on my bourbon barbecue sauce. Okay, I've got all my ingredients assembled and wanted to show you what goes into the barbecue sauce. So. The base for most barbecue sauces is ketchup. You can also do a vinegar one as well, but ketchup is usually the main ingredient in a barbecue sauce. And then you always add a little vinegar. I like using apple cider vinegar. I've got some molasses, add a little dark sweetness, got a little Worcestershire sauce. Those are kind of the basics. And then from there, you can kind of add on extra flavors to amp up your barbecue sauce and make it even 
tastier. So to amp up the flavor even more, I'm adding a little cayenne pepper, I'm adding some paprika, and you know how much I love smoked paprika. So much more flavor than regular paprika, and it's really good in this recipe because it gives that really smoky background flavor, which is perfect in a barbecue sauce. We also have some mustard powder, garlic cloves, pepper, and some dark brown sugar. I like to use dark brown sugar. You can use light, but I think there's something that complements the molasses with the dark brown sugar. It adds a little sweetness. And so you have all the flavor combinations here in the barbecue sauce. You've got a little sweet, you've got a little spicy, you've got like deep and smoky. And so with that, we're gonna combine them all into my saucepan. Let's go do that. and you want to put this on your stove. See, it's not quite thick yet. It's a little thick, but not, not as thick as you're going to want it to be. So you're going to put it on the stove, simmer it low simmer for about 10 minutes until it thickens up really nicely. Don't forget to taste as you go. So if you want it to be a little bit sweeter, you can add some more um, brown sugar. If you want it to be a little bit more acidic, you can add some more apple cider vinegar, add a little bit more paprika or add a little extra cayenne if you want it spicier. But before that, I almost forgot. I add a little whiskey to it too. So to really take the flavor up and to go with the theme of our episode, you add a little splash or two of whiskey and mix that in too. Just use your favorite whiskey. I'm a big fan of using what you actually like to drink as well. It does not have to be expensive, but it does have to be something that you also would like a glass of. So I'm gonna go put this on the stove. It smells so good already with the whiskey. <laughs> put it on the stove and I'll show you what it looks like after about 10 minutes. So it looks like after about 10 minutes to so see how much thicker it is. So delicious. This recipe makes a ton. So if you want something really fun to bring as a hostess gift, make a batch, keep half for yourself, and bring half to whichever party you're going to this weekend. Put in a little cute little mason jar, tie with a cute little ribbon, and you're done. Really fun hostess gift. So that's it. That's how you make the whiskey barbecue sauce. Hope you all have a really wonderful 4th of July. Oh my gosh, your cocktail is amazing. Well, it's a bit hefty for me. <laughs> I love that you I'm such it. a lightweight. <laughs> it goes beautifully though with my barbecue sauce. Didn't it just? Good way to celebrate the 4th of July. Absolutely. I think I might have my own mini celebration over here. I think you should do that. Break out the barbecue. <laughs> Make the barbecue sauce. If it's not raining. <laughs> if it's not raining. <laughs> Oh my gosh, we have been having the worst heat wave here in the Pacific Northwest. It has been, I think it was 108 degrees here. It's over 100 for three consecutive days. Unheard of. So I think it's yeah. cooling down to the mid 80s this weekend, which will be lovely. So for the British audience, that is in excess of 40 degrees, which I just couldn't cope with. It, last year, oh no, oh, the years are all merging into one. I had... Um, I was at a, an event for about three or four days and the temperature was up in the 30s and it was, I was inside a marquee and it was blistering hot and I couldn't cope with it at all. I'm such a lightweight. I'm such, such a Brit in that respect. I love the heat, but this was even too much for me. It just, when you open the door and you're literally hit with this wall of heat. Stifling. It's just, it reminded me of growing up, we would spend a lot of time in Palm Springs because I grew up in LA. So you'd go to Palm Springs a lot. And then over spring break in April, you'd have temperatures like that, where you're literally going from an air conditioned hotel room to an air conditioned car to an air conditioned mall or restaurant or movie theater, because you can only like, I play tennis with my dad, but we'd be up at 6 a.m. in the morning to play tennis because you can't play past seven because it would be too hot. And it's even too hot to be in the, I mean, you don't want to lay out by the pool. You can go for a dip, but if you're going to go in for a swim, you get right out, put the towel on and you're back in your air conditioning. How on earth did we manage before air conditioning? Look, I've got my top hat on. I'll move over a bit. I like that. I don't know. The statistic here in, and I know it's lower in, in the UK and in Europe, but here in Washington, I think they were saying that only 44% of households actually have air conditioning. You just don't need it here normally. Mm. And oh, but before we close off for this week's episode, should we chat with our audience just a little bit about the difference between whiskey and bourbon? 
Go for it. Go for it. I, I'll be honest, I, I like the cocktail, but I'm not a huge whiskey fan. But um, yeah. yeah, let's I do like bourbon. A bourbon. My husband's a big bourbon drinker. He loves his bourbon. So he, he usually has some very lovely bourbons, although I don't really drink them. He drinks it just over ice. Um, and I'll do make a, I'll make a cocktail with them. That's how I like my bourbon, like in a cocktail. Mm -hmm. But yeah. in researching for this episode, I didn't realize that all bourbon is whiskey, but not all whiskey is bourbon. Is bourbon. That bourbon needs to be 51% corn in addition to the wheat, the rye and barley. And bourbon needs to be aged in dry aged oak barrels. Where whiskey yeah. can be aged in anything that's housed liquor, it can be oak barrels, it yeah. can be rum, it can be port, it can be sherry. Yeah, we're not proud. Chuck it in anything. Exactly. Chuck it. And the other thing is that it's so cold in Scotland, it takes way longer to actually I bet. mature. Like a rather fine woman. Exactly. I like that. Exactly. So, oh, there's a great book. Oh, yes, you mentioned this. Yes, Pappy Land. So for everyone watching, if you are a bourbon drinker, you will know and you've heard of Pappy Van Winkle. It is a very exclusive, very high-end bourbon, very hard to get. Um, I think if you put on the waiting list, you're not gonna walk into a liquor store or even most bars um, and be able to find it. It's that exclusive. And I know that like a little shot can go, I think it starts it, it can start at like $500. It's very- Oh my God. But, oh no, very exclusive, but there's a book called Pappy Land, and I believe it was written by relatives. It might even be written by the daughters, granddaughters maybe, of the founders, creators of Pappy Van Winkle. But it is a wonderful book, we'll link below, that talks all about okay. bourbon, the history of bourbon. So if you want to know more about bourbon, highly recommend That's Pappy Land. That's a place to go Land. to. Yeah, Pappy Land. Whoa, yeah. blimey. Who knows? Well, yeah, you get really aged whiskeys that cost a fortune, so it doesn't surprise me really. Yeah, no, it's but, it's crazy expensive, but yeah. yeah, it's crazy expensive. But that's what was fun about doing this episode is that I learned even more about bourbon than I knew before. There you Good. go. We're educating ourselves as well as all of our wonderful subscribers and followers. Exactly, exactly. And speaking of which, if you've liked watching this episode we would love it if you like and subscribe below so you know when the next episode drops we have some yep. really fun episodes coming up more episodes we'll have an olympic themed episode with some delicious japanese food so yeah that, i think that's made. inspired idea i think fantastic. i wouldn't have thought of that idea jane <laughs> <laughs> um idea. and also while we're, we're pushing our wares um Talking of bourbon and very expensive bourbons, we're not sponsored by anybody, but we're happy to receive a bottle of the very expensive bourbon through the post. Anytime. <laughs> Just send it to us. Anytime. Make your husband very happy, wouldn't it? Oh, he would be. <laughs> That's not going to happen. Don't tell him. That. But you That's never know. Not gonna happen. We'll put it out in the universe. We'll put it out in the universe because you never know. Exactly. 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 Well, okay. another wonderful episode in the bag fab yeah i really enjoyed it thank you ever so much i really hope you have a wonderful fourth of july oh, and, so and cheers cheers to everybody enjoy your celebrations and, exactly um, be safe have a fabulous fourth of july everybody all the links for everything we've talked about in this episode are down below check out whiskey and wolf the candles are incredible yeah. we'll put the links to our recipes below as well as happy land and yeah, have a happy and safe 4th of July, everybody. And we'll see you next week. Bye, Lisa. Bye, Jane. Bye, everybody.